boast message vulnerabilities. Most bug bounty hunters don't even look for them, but they are everywhere, hiding in a checkout pages, authentication flows, customer support widgets, and they lead straight to XSS data leaks and account takeovers. I was watching Critical Thinking Bug Bounty Bootcast episode 151. Rainator and Rezu were breaking down client side vulnerabilities. And by the way, shout out to Rainator and Rezu and the whole Critical Thinking Bookcast team for the great content they are putting out. So while watching the episode, I realized something. I haven't properly tested for post message vulnerabilities in a while. So I went down to the rabbit hole again. And I found that these vulnerabilities are everywhere. They are in major applications, they are exploitable, and most hunters completely miss them because they don't know where to look. Now, if you have absolutely zero idea what post message vulnerabilities are, you should probably check out introduction to post message vulnerabilities article by Yes We Hack covers all the fundamentals you need to get started. But today, I'm showing you the real stuff. By the end of this video, you'll know exactly how to find these vulnerabilities, exploit them, and understand why they matter in modern bug bounty hunting. So, this is Emersec, go get your cafe ready and let's dive in. All right, so check this out. This is a page with a post message listener. Here, it's just a chat. I write my name and it will redirect me to the support panel. And this is my exploit. If I just click here, exploit, we have XSS. That's it. That's a post message vulnerability in action. Now, let me show you what just happened and how you can find these yourself. So, what is post message? Post message is a JavaScript API that allows different windows or iframes to communicate with each others, even if they are from different origins. Normally, the browser's same origin policy blocks cross origin communication. You cannot just grab data from a different domain. That's a security feature. But post message is the exception. It's especially designed to let different organs talk to each others safely. The keyword there, safely. When developers implement post message wrong, you get vulnerabilities. Every post message interaction has three critical elements. I call this the post message triangle. The first thing is the sender, who's sending the message. Second is the receiver, who's listening for this message. And third is the sync. Where does this data go? What does the code do with the message? If you understand these three elements, you understand post message exploitation. So what is origin? What is the sender? What is the receiver? And what the heck is the sync? Let me break them down. Before we dive into the triangle, you need to understand what origin means because origin validation is where most vulnerabilities happen. Origin equals protocol plus host. That's it. Two components. For example, HTTPS example.com. This is an origin. HTTPS subdomain.example.com. This is different origin because it has different subdomain. HTTP example.com. This is also different origin because it has different protocol. HTTPS example.com on both 2020. This is different origin because it's different port. Same host and different protocol is different origin. Same protocol and different subdomain is different origin. Same everything and different port is also different origin. This matters because post message security relies on origin checks. The receiver need to validate. Is this message coming from a trusted origin? If the check is weak or missing, you can bypass it. And that's your entry point. Now, let's talk about the sender. All right, so the sender is the code that initiates the post message. It's where the message originates. Okay, this code sends a message. The first argument is the data that being sent. It could be a string, an object, anything. And the second argument is the target origin. In this example, it's HTTPS target.com. Only that origin should receive this message. But here is where it gets dangerous. Do you see that asterisk? That's the wild card. It means send this message to any origin. If the data contains sensitive information, you can just broadcast it to anyone listening. But the sender is not usually where the main vulnerability lives. The real danger is in the receiver. The receiver actually is the listener, the code that waits for incoming messages. So this code listens for any post message. When one arrives, it logs the data. 
symbol. But here is the problem. This listener accepts message from any origin. No validation, no checking. When a message arrives, the listener receives an event object with three critical properties. First, event.data. Event.data is the actual message content. Second is event.origin, where the message is coming from, the sender's origin. Third, we have the event.source, which is the reference to the window that sent the message. The receiver should always check the event.origin before processing the event.data. So if we have a vulnerable receiver with no origin check, this is what the code will look like. Now, any website can send a message to this page and it will be proceeded. And this is our entry point. But when it comes to a proper origin checking, the code of it will look like this. Now, this checks if this message is coming from HTTPS trusted.com only. If yes, process it. If no, just ignore it. That's how it should be done. But the developers are always messing this up. So this actually was the receiver. Now let's talk about the sync. The sync is where the data goes. What does the code do with the received message? This demerates the impact. So we have different places for this, but the first sync and the most important one is the inner HTML. And the code of it will be something like this, which is window that add, add event listener just listens. And when it gets the data, it just adds it to inner HTML, okay? So the message data goes directly to inner HTML with no satanization. So if we send that XSS payload, it will just execute immediately. This was the inner HTML thing. Another thing is eval for code execution. And the code for it will look like this. So right here, it's also listening for any message. And once it receives the data, it just give it to eval directly. Basically, the message being passed to eval. You can just send a message with JavaScript and this will execute it immediately. And that's it. That's all you need, right? So this is the eval sync. We also have the location sync. It will look like this right here. It's just getting the data and adds it to window.location. So the message controls the page location. So if we send something like this, which is JavaScript URL, it will just execute. So we have another XSS, or you can just give it a URL to a phishing website. One last sync we have, which is the sensitive data exposure sync, and the code of it will look like this. So the receiver sends back a sensitive data to requesting origin. If there is no origin validation, you can request and receive user data from your own malicious page. So basically, the sync determines what you can do. Inner HTML gives you XSS. Eval gives you code execution. Location gives you redirects. Data handlers gives you information leakage. Now you understand the post message triangle, sender, receiver, and the sync. Here is where exploitation starts. Developers implement weak origin checks that you can bypass. The first mistake we have is using origin filtration with JavaScript. For example, start with, and the code for it will look like this. So this checks if the origin starts with HTTPS target.com. Sounds fine, right? Wrong. If we bought a domain that's, let's say, uh, xyz.com and we created subdomain, so it will be at the end, https target.com.xyz.com, which is subdomain, but it starts with https target.com and this will pass that check we are in. So the second mistake that the developers always do is weak regexs, specifically the unscaped dot. This one, for example, here the developer forgot to escape that dot. In the regex. In regex, a dot means any single character. Let's say D, C, A, any single character. So here we can bypass this by matching target XCOM or target dash com or whatever. And this will also bypass the check. And third mistake we have is using include. Right here, if the event.org includes target.com. So basically, this checks if the target.com appears anywhere in the origin. So if we just bought a domain called blah 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 target.com, it will just pass the check. One last mistake we have, which is origin.index of. It's same problem as includes. As long as target.com appears somewhere, you are just good. It will just pass the check. So basically, these mistakes are everywhere and they are your way 
m all right so now you understand this in theory how do you actually find this in the wild so actually we have three methods and the first method we have is basically fancy tracker okay so fancy tracker will highlight the post message sender the message listeners the data being proceed it gives you a visual overview without manual setting breakpoints and so on so it's just great for recon right here i have this vulnerable web page if i refresh you will see that i have fancy tracker right here showing me the listener okay that's pretty much it this is the first method the second method is basically using the chrome tools you can open the chrome tools and go to the sources tab on the right side expand the event listeners breakpoints and check the box for the messages under control and now when you interact with the page if there is any post message is sent or received the debug will pause that's it and by this method actually you can inspect the event.urgent and the event.data and the event.source and this method is specifically manual but it is so so powerful you see exactly what's happening in real time and the last method we have is manual code reviewing right here on, on this page you can manually review the javascript code and search for specific things for example right here on the on the debugger i can go to search which is the global search i can search with something like add event listener right and if i expand this a little bit for you you will see that we have here add event listener which is exactly the things that we are uh, looking for and you can just analyze all of these one by one. Or you can also search with something like a uh, post message like this right here you can see window to post message and these things so that's basically it if you have a large number of javascript you can just put them to visual so you could or whatever editor you are dealing with once you find that listener read the code if there is any urgent validations if yes can you bypass it where does the even data go because this is your sync Actually, I thought about creating like a multi-level lab uh, for this uh, vulnerability and exploit them together. But at the end, it's just lab. And instead, I will just show you some case studies and explain them to you. So right here, we have this article. It's called Hunting Post Message Vulnerabilities Part 2. It's by... Uh, it's by Malik, okay? So here it's discussing some case studies for post message vulnerabilities for real world targets, okay? So right here, I'm not going to explain everything. I will just explain three case studies. The first case study, the sync here was open. And the open means open a new window on the browser, okay? So the target was having this message handler for any 404 page, which is basically this. If you have no idea what this means and you cannot just understand anything, try to figure out any button okay try to recognize any pattern and if you check this you will see that we have here origin ends with target.com that's it buddy that's all of it right here you will see that it's telling you it ends with target.com so that means any junk target.com will just pass the check and as attacker he just sent something like this okay which is javascript alert poc because right here it just the url it opens a url so he just used a javascript url but he sent it from this origin which was junktarget.com or whatever it is but it have to end with target.com once he sent it it's just being accepted and boom he got an xss and of course after this you have to escalate not just xss once you get xss you will try to to escalate this xss to reach for example account takeover or something like this but this is not the case okay so the case study two right here, it was the location sync. If you have no idea what location is in JavaScript, you will see right here, it's telling you the location object is property of window object and contains information about the current URL. So for example, if we used something like location to triplace right here or location to assign, the browser will navigate or navigate to this URL that we specified. And let's forget about all of this, but let's take a look right here. Right here, if you take a look on this code, there is not even that origin there is literally nothing okay it just gets the url and just to proceed it and that's exactly what what happens here there is no origin check right so there is no origin check that means he just sent this url which is also javascript url achieving xss that's it right and of course it's not always that simple but you have no idea the time that it took to find it so uh, the third case study right here it's it's different but actually it leads to the same thing which was the iframe source sync. 
the source attribute specifies the URL of the document that's embedded in the iframe. So if the iframe source is google.com, it will just open google.com. So if you take a look right here, you will see that it's a little bit different. Uh, the URL is being proceed differently here. It's basically uh, extracts the URL from the window.location href, especially the part that's enclosed in these brackets. And if you go a little bit down, you will see that he tried to see what this satinization or how he can bypass this satinization. So here, for example, this removes the HTML tag. This also removes or basically remove the JavaScript URLs. And this removes any schema such as data schema, for example. And the other one is removing the control character. So this is actually a basic satinization. But when he dug a little bit in, he found that this one, for example, when it's being proceeded, it will be like after the synchronization, it will be something like this, which is exactly what he wants. So that's it. After he sent this message, he exactly got a XSS. And that's pretty much it. That's how the things will go. Of course, if you scroll more down, you'll see how the things get more advanced and advanced, which is really awesome. So yeah, that's pretty much it. I tried to not dive really deep into this, only giving you the basics. And if you want to dive really deep into this, more advanced techniques and so on, just let me know in the comments. So do you remember the quick exploit that I showed to you in the very beginning of the video? Let me now break it down for you. Right now, if I get back to the Visual Studio Code and go to the vulnerable HTML page, it's really basic to you because you already know what's happening. So right here, we have the add event listener and just waiting for the data. And once it gets to the data, it's putting it directly to the the inner HTML, which is our sim. Again, we have to check out something right here. Where is the origin? Exactly. This is the second thing. It's just missing all the origin validation, right? So that's it. It's just listening for any message and there is no origin validation and it's just adding the data to inner HTML. It's like absolutely vulnerable, okay? So if I go back to the exploit, you will see that's also really basic. It just opens this window, which is my vulnerable page and sending this message, which is basically image source on alert xss and this sends a message to any origin so once i click exploit right here it's opening the window sending the message and that's it that's all of it now that you know exactly what happened sender receiver sync the post message triangle in the real applications post message show up in a specific context for example check out pages payment processors use iframes and post message to communicate between the merchant site and the payment gateway also in the authentication flows oauth pop-ups use post message to send tokens back to the parent window also in the customer support widgets live chat window communicate with the main page via post post message. Also the hidden iframes. Sites use invisible iframes for tracking, analytics, or cross-domain storage, all communicating through post message. These are your hunting grounds. Find pages with iframes, find authentication flows, find the checkout processors. That's where post message lives. All right, so now you know how to find these vulnerabilities and exploit them. But here is why you should actually go hunt for them. Automated scanners cannot find post message vulnerabilities. These vulnerabilities require manual code review, understanding of JavaScript context, knowledge of the post message API, and creative thinking for origin bypasses. Most bug bounty hunters stop at reflected XSS and SQL injection. They run their scanners, submit their reports, move on. Post message vulnerabilities require an actual scale. You have to read code. You have to understand how the application works. You have to think like a developer to spot their mistake. That's what makes this a differential. Programs need hunters who can find these because their automated tools and security vendors are not catching them. And the impact is serious. XSS, data leaks, account takeovers, these are critical findings. So if you want to stand out in bug bounty, this is one of the scale areas to focus on client-side vulnerabilities that require manual analysis. So that's the post message vulnerabilities from detection to exploitation. And this is just the beginning with post message. There is way more depth here. Advanced bypasses, chaining with other vulnerabilities, exploiting specific frameworks, and so much more. So check out the description for all the resources. The Critical Thinking Bootcast episode, the SV Hack intro article, the detailed blog post with the case studies, everything is linked. And if you find post message vulnerability in the wild, tag me in Twitter. 
I want to see. Also, if you found this video helpful, do not forget to like, subscribe, and hit that bell icon for more cybersecurity content. And if you have any questions, feel free to drop them in the comments below or you can reach me directly on Twitter. Until next time, stay curious and stay secure.